Hey everybody, it's Dan, your friendly fishmonger from dancefish.com, and today we're doing a tour showing you the new fish. These have all just been listed at dancefish.com if you're in the market. And I do this so that if you're interested in buying fish, you can see what you'll actually be getting. So there's no surprises. You'll see how big they are, how colored up they are, all that stuff. So let's start down here with something I'm very excited about. This is Corydora's white spinai. They are a fantastic fish. They are rather, I would say, rare and expensive, and I'm thrilled to have some good ones. This entire batch is doing fantastic, haven't had any issues, and they absolutely love this aquarium. Check it out. It's 100 gallons, 6 feet, a lot of wide open space for them, and then if they're feeling skittish, they can go in these bushes, and then on this side, a bunch more wide open space for them. They absolutely love the sand, like most quarries, they'll stick their heads way down in it looking for worms and stuff. And I love the colors, those nice bold black saddles on the body, contrasting with that kind of cream color, make them, I think, a really unique, really cool fish. I know they're pricey, This, there are some Corydora species that are a lot pricier than these though. So. I would call these a mid-price quarries. They go up really high, some of them. But uh, that's that's how it is. Fish prices are going up. Um, as an example of that, I just placed another order. This will be from Indonesia, a bunch of wild-type rainbows and wild-type bettas I'm very excited about. Cargo is twice as much. It used to cost $6.75 per kilogram. Cargo has gone up, it is now $12 per kilogram. So literally doubled the cost to ship fish in. So prices are going up. This is just a consequence of COVID, unfortunately. Hopefully it doesn't last long, but right now that's where we're at. So it might be a little sticker shock. Um, if you're shopping around this industry in the next little while, we don't know how long it'll last, but there's a lot of additional costs now, unfortunately. Anyway, cool catfish, white and I. Let's go look at some rice fish. Let's start there. So pardon the mess, this is a maintenance day for me, so I have buckets and stuff everywhere. Um, these are the white ones. And we're gonna start with the top down view. They have a nice, nice dorsal stripe down the top of the body. I, I put some wafers in there, so they're actually all at the bottom right now. They usually kind of hang towards the top of the tank. But since I fed them, they're all down here. But you can see that glowing, bright white on them. Hopefully, all that iridescence and kind of glowing uh, effect is showing up even though they're on camera. Oftentimes, that kind of coloration is hard to see on camera, but kind of a white body, maybe a little bit bluish on the body with um, a nice white dorsal stripe. And these guys just absolutely glow. Now these rice fish and the orange ones I'm about to show you, I won't be able to sex for you. They're at about three quarters of an inch to an inch right now. So they are uh, right around sexually mature and, and just about starting to breed. I can see a few males developing, but um, it's too early for me to sex them with confidence. So I don't want to do that because I don't want to send you the wrong sex on these. I'm, I'd be guessing at this point on most of them. But anyway, check them out. They're, oh, I'm so happy with these rice fish I got this time. Super healthy, no losses. Everyone's vibrant and doing great. All right, let's move over here. A different catfish. Oh man, I was hoping they'd be out front. This is a cloudy tank, so it's gonna be a little hard to see. But these are Scleromastix barbatus. The Barbatus quarry, they're often called. They're not truly a quarry, but they're very closely related. These get big. These top out at about four inches. I think they're the largest of the quarry type catfish. They, um, let me see if I can get in there a little bit. Anyway, right now they're about an inch, give or take a bit, right around an inch. So they have a lot of growing to do. Maybe if I just stay still, they'll come back out. They are different than your typical quarries in a couple ways. One, they get really big. One, they're from southern Brazil, so they can take cooler temperatures. Down to 60 degrees Fahrenheit, no problem for these guys. They might be able to go a little cooler. 
Um, up to the upper 70s, they do just fine. I have the lid off on this tank just because then I get a little cooling going on, a little evaporative cooling, keeps them a little cooler. They're eating absolutely everything. They're fat, sassy little guys. The other thing that's different about these than your typical corridors type catfishes, the males are actually territorial. So the males will claim a territory and chase other males out of it. So there is a little bit, they're not quite as calm and peaceful as your typical quarry, which is just a super peaceful, calm community fish. So there they are, square mastics, barbatus. Oh, can we see all that cuteness on the back? It's probably not gonna show up well. Yeah, that's just a exercise in madness. We'll stop that. Okay, the next one I'm very happy with. I just scared them because I, they saw the camera, but here they are. German blue rams. Oh, they're super skittish with the camera here. Anyway, they're adults. They're in great shape. They're doing fantastic. Haven't had any problems with these. Keep rams warm. These are probably about 85 degrees right now. They kind of my temperatures for them range from 84 to 86 degrees. That is something you'll need to do if you want to keep these healthy and happy. Warm temperatures, clean water. But as long as you do that, they'll do fine for you. Um, I'm not going to be able to sex these either. There's I, I know there's males and females in there, but they haven't really paired off or anything. So the females aren't showing their bright red bellies. So that means I have to pay really close attention to all these tiny little fin differences. And when I'm catching orders to pack them, I don't have the time to do that. Um, so I'm not going to be sexing these. Now, if some of them pair off, then I'll change that and offer some sexed ones, but not at the moment. There they are. German blue rams. Hopefully their color's coming through. Um, again, they haven't paired off, so they aren't fully colored like you'll see them sometimes but they're super healthy and it's a nice batch. Okay, so I'm gonna come around here real quick and I wanna show you just a couple more fish. An update on these, these are the Betta Patodi and they've grown a ton. They're a lot bigger now. I just fed him, look at that belly, jeez, man. Overeat much? Um, there's six of them in here. Where are the rest? They're usually out and about. If they think they're getting fed, then maybe they'll come. Although maybe not, they're super fat right now. They just ate a ton. I just fed them black worms and when I do that, they absolutely indulge. Here's another one right down here. <laughs> you guys ate too much. <laughs> but anyway, they're getting a lot bigger. So they're not as skinny anymore. Well, even before, I should have shown them to you before I fed them, I guess. Uh, even before they eat, they're kind of getting some bulk to them. So they're doing really well. Down here is another tank I want to show you. These are some fish I raised up and are ready to go. I'll be posting these. These are um, some Cobra Endlers. I ran out, but I had some babies, so I've raised them up. They aren't huge right now, but as you can see, the males are nicely colored. Um, they still have some growing to do, but, but they're, they're good. Right, those are getting pretty good size. So I'll show you the other rice fish and some other stuff. Okay, so here are what are the gold rice fish, gold lame. They're named after that super bright fabric that um, has metal woven in it, like Elvis used to wear in his Vegas days. <laughs> but there they are. They have sparkles all over their body. It looks like they were rolled in glitter, basically. And as you can see, some of them have full orange bodies, some have some orange on the body, and some are pretty much white, but they all have the sparkles. So, what I'm not sure, I, this is my first time with this fish, so I'm not sure, but I think perhaps that gold color will intensify as they grow. That's what I'm hoping happens. Um, but right now, some of them have gold heads, some of them have gold on the whole body and some of them not many but just a few are pretty much white with all the sparkles so not sure exactly what that means I'm, I'm hoping as they grow their color out anyway they're doing fantastic they're all attacking algae wafers there that's why they're in a big clump at the bottom um, again 0.75 to one inch somewhere in that range closer to one point uh, closer to three quarters of an inch, I would say. So I'm not gonna be able to sex this group either. I'm sorry about that. It's just not something 
I'm gonna do it because I'm afraid I'll get it wrong at this size. Okay, so let me just check real quick. Was there anything? Oh yeah, of course. Another cloud of awesomeness. Here are the gold white clouds. As people know, these are some of the hardiest, most pretty um, aquarium fish you could ever ask for. Look at that group of them. It's just like a solid, that solid mass of white cloud. Um, <laughs> these are the gold variant. They're super bright gold. They shine from across the room. Um, they're around an inch right now. And they're, they're breeding daily. They love this Java moss. Every day they come over um, and they'll get down so you're not seeing my bright colored shorts. Try to get the black shirt in the reflection instead. Um, they spawn all over in this Java moss every day, so that is just absolutely full of eggs. So anyway, there are the golden white clouds. Again, all the fish I'm showing you, the batches came in super sturdy. This is a fairly new supplier, but I've been I've been using off and on for a couple months now. Well, for about what five months or so, but there was a little break in COVID where I couldn't get fish from them, but now I can again. And I'm pretty much always impressed. Look at this male all fired up. Check him out dancing there. Oh, of course he stopped as soon as I put the camera on. Um, but I've been pretty impressed with almost all of their fish. So they're coming in looking really good. These look very healthy too. These are some um, Fundula Panchax Gardneri. This is a second batch I got because the first one did so well. And they're super healthy. You can see them all there. The problem is, I think I bought about a hundred. There's maybe two males in there is all. In the old batch there's, I counted, I found four or five males. So I have listed some more groups of these breeding groups for sale. One male, three females. But I don't know what I'm going to do with all these females. Yeah, they're healthy and happy, but who wants a tank full of females? I don't know. So I'm going to try maybe to buy another batch and communicate with the uh, seller and say, look, I want to buy another batch, but only if you guarantee like at least 50% females this time, because I, I'm literally sitting on like 150 females right now. Anyway, <laughs> it's a funny business sometimes. Let me give you an update on the rummy nose, and then I'll show you the other new fish upstairs. So, here's how they're doing. They're, uh, they're getting fatter. They're doing a little better. They're definitely more active. Like, look at them. They're begging for food. So, they're doing well. Still not quite ready, but they're eating fine, and most of them are fattening up and filling out. So, it's just a little longer until they're really fattened out and I'm confident that nothing's going to go south. There's still a few skinny ones in there like this little guy. I don't know if that one will make it. Uh, he's just not gaining weight even though he eats. And I've treated with all the parasite stuff I know how to treat with, so I'm not sure what's going on with him. But most of them have responded and are doing great. Okay, so let me t take you upstairs to the fish annex and show you what's going on up there. Okay, here we are in the fish annex. The first uh, fish to show you up here. I'm gonna sneak up on them because I don't want to startle them. Are these? Oh, they've already got startled. These are Corridors Adolfoi. They're doing fantastic. I could have released them probably a week or two ago, but they're an expensive fish. Here, let's look at these. This group here. So I just wanted to make double sure that everyone was okay. And give them just a little longer to get a little more weight. Um, I don't know if it's going to show on camera, but they have this bright gold, kind of, yeah, gold orangish spot up on their shoulders between the two black, between the black stripe through the eyes and the black stripe down the back. And they're just, uh, I think, delightful. They're eating really well. Everyone's doing fine. So I think these are good to go. Again, though, they're a little pricey, so want to take a little more time and just make double sure because when they came in to me they looked a little skinny now I don't think that they were actually skinny I just think it's with that black stripe down the back contrasting with the white I think it made them look like it's an optical illusion 
Made them look a little, it's their skinny jeans. Made them look a little skinnier. But there are the Adolfoi. They're doing absolutely great. I couldn't be happier with that group of fish. Um, looking for red tags. I, I marked the tanks ready to go with red tags, but I know there's a couple over here that are now ready. Here's the first batch to show you. These are pygmy quarries. I'm gonna say these are around half grown right now. They top out at about an inch. They may be a little over half an inch or so, these guys, right around there. But as you see, they're not like most quarries. First, they're small, yes, but second is they, they spend quite a bit of time kind of mid-water in the low, lower level. They don't just hug the bottom like most quarries do, which makes them fairly unique. And they're just cute as a button. They're, they're very much all quarries, all Corydoras. Some of the scleromastics might be different in Epistodoras and things, but all Corydoras species that I know of are definitely schooling fish. These even more so. These are not going to do well if they don't come in a group. The more the merrier. It's, they feel so much more comfortable um, when they're in a group. Let me see if I can get them out here under the sand a little bit so we can see them a little better maybe. Uh, they're pretty skittish right now. This camera freaks them out. Next we have the northern long-nosed quarry. Corridoris septrionalis. I believe I'm saying that right. I practiced. Corridoris septrionalis. And they have a really long snout, especially when they get older. Sorry, the tank's a little cloudy because that's new sand in there. Um, but the other thing about them that's super cool, and I really hope is showing up, is that their face has um, a lot of bright green on it, bright iridescent green. They're like, I think they should be called like the green face quarry. hard with all the cloudiness. First of all, they stir up all that kind of mulm. There's some uh, algae mulm in there. The second thing is that the sand is, they just stir up the sand a lot, so. Um, okay, I'm just gonna hold it there and let them, let you see them. Anyway, Corridoris septrionalis, the northern long-nosed quarry. And I believe, I believe that's going to do it. I think that's all of them. Thanks for joining. Um, these are all available at dancefish.com. So if you saw anything you liked, check them out there. And um, yeah, until next time, have a good one. Bye-bye.